Hello and welcome everybody to another Dustmorn House of Horror Draft. I'm Paul Chion and today we are still sitting at rank number three. Really do want to end this at rank number two. I think rank one is going to be pretty far away, but maybe if we go 7-0, we can get one step closer to rank number one. Now, before this draft fires, I just wanted to say that this video is brought to you by TCGplayer.com. Check out TCGplayer.com for all your TCG singles and sealed product needs. You want to pick up that booster box or, or single for your next FNM, make sure you check them out. Click that affiliate link in the description below before you do any purchases. Additionally, Check out heavyplay.com for premium Magic the Gathering supplies and accessories. We're talking about deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, dice boxes, and more. Go to heavyplay.com slash paulcheon for 10% off your first order. Additionally, Heavy Play is going to have a booth presence at MagicCon Vegas. So make sure you stop by the booth, say hi, say Paul sent you, and they will give you a 10% discount off your purchase in the booth. All right, I think I'm due for a rare... I've had a lot of decks with no rares recently. Actually, I can't even. I just want a rare, okay? I just want a rare. That's a rare. That's a good rare. Twitching doll. I think I will take that. Lionheart Glimmer is fine, but I think if the Twitching doll wasn't in the pack, I would take Betrayer's Bargain, which is an excellent removal spell. And then if it wasn't for the bargain, I'd probably take the Glimmer. But I do love me a Twitching doll. Just Two mana, mana creature is great. It's an artifact, helps you get Delirium too. It'll die in a lot of instances, but you know, if you draft a color combination where you can get this card back, that's really, really great. All right, moving on to this pack, there are two options. There's Sheltered by Ghost, which is an incredible, incredible removal effect that lets you race, gain life, etc. But I think the combination of Sheltered by Ghost into Twitching Doll is quite weak. I generally try to avoid white if possible. I think it's fine when you pair it with blue, but I really love Thress Around Every Corner. This card is fantastic and a really good follow-up with the Twitching Doll. By starting with these two cards, it really means that we can go a lot of different directions with green and just look to take all the powerful cards that we see. So I'm going to take Threats Around Every Corner over Sheltered by Ghost, recognizing that Sheltered by Ghost is quote-unquote a stronger card that has a higher win rate, but I do think this is a better card to follow up the Twitching Doll. Now, had I taken first pick, um, the if I took the Glimmer first pick, the Lionheart Glimmer, I would definitely take the Shelter by Ghost. But given that I took the Twitching Doll, I think this is fine. Moving on to pack number three, we have a couple of good options here. I'm not looking at any of the commons. I'm looking at basically between Nowhere to Run and Painter Studio. Both cards are very, very good. I'm a huge fan of Painter Studio, though. This is just a card that gives you card advantage in the late game, gives you a nice mana sink. So as good as Nowhere to Run is, I prefer the Painter Studio here. Oh, fourth pick under the skin. Let's go. This is what I'm talking about. This is the power that we need. No commons in sight. Withering Torment would be the other option as a decent removal spell. Seeing some blue-white token generators, but third, uh, fourth pick under the skin is absolutely incredible for us. Here we have Moldering Gym, Wary Watchdog, Terramorphic Expanse, and to a lesser degree, let's play a game. But I think I'm going to be looking at either the Expanse or the green cards here. Hmm. They're all very good. I'm going to take the Terramorphic Expanse because I think it's a less replaceable effect that lets me go into a lot of different color combinations, whereas two drops are fairly easy to come by and Moldering Gyms are relatively easy to come by, all things considered. So we'll take this and I really do want to make sure that I just set myself up nicely to basically just take any good card that I see. This is a really great setup for that. All right. Ooh, that is a Split Skin Doll sixth pick. I mean, I don't like, I don't like white green, but that is significantly better than anything else here. There is a final vengeance in the pack. If I wanted to go in that direction for a removal effect, we could be end up in black green. I just, white doesn't really pair very well with the other cards that we have going on. I'm actually just going to take final vengeance. We'll just push the person that we're passing to in white, but I can totally see a Jun deck with this configuration that we have right now. And now we have, eh, I don't care about Derelict Addict, certainly not seeing blue. So yeah, Jun can be a direction to move into. There is a Percussionist versus Rootwise Survivor. 
And I think I prefer the per percussionist. This also makes the splash on Final Vengeance a little bit better as well. And this, I just don't care about this type of effect. Like, I would, you know, I can play Bashful Beastie, right? Whereas percussionist type effects like this are harder to come by. This card also just gets better with cards like the Deface Gallery. And yeah, this is an okay start. Okay, well, nothing in green red that I like, but I do like the innocuous rat. If somehow we end up shifting and just end up in like a, a black green delirium deck, certainly this could be a thing. If that uh, let's play a game tables, I would be very interested in that. I, th I do think our green cards are probably too good to abandon though. So I don't know that we can make the shift into a red black sacrifice deck just from the sheer power level of the green cards that we have. And now we have this pack that's got Root White Survivor, Winter's Intervention as options. It did not, I mean, we saw the late percussion, but we didn't see a ton of red. I think black green looks like that's where the, you know, looks like where it, it looks like that's where we need to be. And I'm going to take the Winter's Intervention, I think, well, actually. No, you know what? I'm going to take the Survivor just because I'm not sure if I'm going to be black or red. And the survivor will basically almost always make my deck. So let's go ahead and take the survivor there. Just because I could be red, green, or green, black. I'll take the cultist. Not really an enchantment deck for the bloodsucker. And the cultist is... I, I don't mind playing a copy of this in my black, green decks. Oh, well, most valuable slayer 11th pick is pretty awesome. So yeah, this is odd. We're like... We could be red or black. We could be red or black. I think I'm leaning red. Just because seeing a most valuable slayer that late seems pretty nice. Also, it works very, very well with the Y survivor that we picked up. And now we have some pretty weak pack. I have two manifest cards. It's between one of these two. I, Vicious Clown is just not a card that I'm usually going to play in one of the in these decks. Granted, I'm probably not playing either of those cards. Okay. Pack number two. What do we do? I'm going to take another Threats Around Every Corner and figure it out later. Head Shredder is fine, but I, I just, I really value the Threats Around Every Corner. We have Twitching Doll, Double Threats Around Every Corner, and a Terramorphic Expanse. Just, just show me the powerful cards, okay? I am ready to take all the Signpost Uncommons and whatever other Splashable Rares I see. And now we have this pack, which is actually quite weak. I wonder if there is something I can do with the Defiled Crypt. I have Resurrected Cultist and Under the Skin. I think it's between the Crypt and like Conductive Machete. I'll take the Machete. I, I'm just gonna have a lot of mana in this deck and this is a nice little mana sink. And again, kind of holding off on which color to go in, but now there's the Signpost Black card, right? So let's go ahead and take the Brood Spinner here and perhaps move away from some of these red cards here. Machete still, like all manifest cards are also just nice with threats around every corner. And now we have this pack, which has Paranormal Analyst. It's got Paranormal Analyst. This is another powerful signpost effect. And honestly, we have threat, double threats around, over, around every corner, under the skin and conductive machete. What am I missing out on? Monstrous Emergence. Yep, I'm taking Analyst. I told you, I'm setting up for splashing whatever I think is extremely powerful. And I think the Analyst counts with all the um, Manifest cards that we have. I will take Final Vengeance number two. With the Innocuous Rat, it's pretty nice. Can even sack the threats around every corner if need be. But we do need some interaction here. And certainly don't care about splashing the Glimmer Seeker here. Wow. That is a fear of burning alive. And a winner's intervention and a monstrous emergence. We'll note that my creatures aren't too big. I just have to play a bunch of mountains to make this work. Now it is a really, really good payoff. Also, I can maybe still splash black and go back to red green. All right, back to Phoba. Look, I'm just, I'm, we're just going back and forth here and playing things as they go, right? We're just, we're just, Trying to be flexible here. Midnight Mayhem, not something I'm interested in splashing, but I will take the Spectral Snatcher. Because 
With this setup, I don't know if I want to play this, but with this setup, like I still have percussionist to sack with the final vengeance. So we'll be splashing the brood spinner and the double final vengeance. Now we're on the lookout definitely for some cheap two mana plays just because uh, these cards are cards you can't really play early. Okay, what do we have here? Live or die is pretty good. All right, maybe we go back to black. Maybe we go back to black. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is awesome. We're trying to find our lane here, okay? We're trying to find our lane. And we just keep going back and forth. Uh, we took a little pivot here. I'll keep these up just in case maybe our mana gets good enough. But I think we're back to black green here. Uh, happy that I took the Snatcher just in case. But now the Snatcher is also something that we can use to get back with Live or Die. I'll take the Appendage Amalgam. Actually, no, I don't think I'm going to play this very often. I'll take Vanish from Sight. This deck is looking like it might want to do some Delirium things. And if my mana fixing is good enough, it's certainly... Uh, and if I lack interaction, it's just a fine card to, to splash as well. I'll take Seize from Slumber, but I doubt I'm going to play that. Turn Inside Out's great, but we're not going to play it most likely. Yeah, and I do like the idea of playing a deck where I can play the Brute Spinner on turn two, so. We're getting a bunch of random red cards here late, but it doesn't matter. Expropriate, I don't care about. This is actually super duper interesting. We have a Brute Spinner versus Unnerving Grasp. Brute Spinner is probably the pick. Like, this is a great splash card. It's Manifest Dread, and we have a Paranormal Analyst. But I am in need of premium two-mana cards, and this card is amazing. It's a little bit unfortunate that we open both. Marvin is pretty cool with Brute Spinner, too, by the way. But yeah, let's just take the Brute Spinner. Oh! Unnerving Grasp. I love it. Okay. Here we are, what? A black-green deck looking to potentially splash blue for the Analyst. There's a Derelict Addict, which I actually don't mind as a card draw effect. Some red cards here. There's a Grasping Long Neck, which I don't think I need to take this early. It is a three mana play. Do I have Delirium? Not a ton. I could take Derelict Addict. This pack is terrible, and I don't really care about splashing for Nashi. So, yeah. Mm. Yep. All right, executive decision. I'm going to just... I can't... You can't waffle forever, okay? Like, I like waffling, but we got to pick a lane. Take the fungus here. We have to pick a lane. And now we are looking to splash blue. I don't care about any of these black cards or the green cards, really, for that matter. So I will take Terramorphic Expanse. Although, you know, honestly, splashing that pier is not terrible. I'll take Innocuous Rat here over Winter's Intervention because we have double final vengeance. Yeah, and this deck certainly could use a card like Derelict Addict. Also, this is a nice thing to sack to final vengeance as well. Okay, now I'll take a Winter's Intervention. Nice cheap thing to play. Don't really care about any of the other cards, really. So good stuff to do in the early game and picking up a random two drop here is also happy. We've got a wary watchdog. Now, I will say our late game isn't super strong. We just don't have that many ways to close out the game. But, oh, what am I saying? I do have double brood spinner with under the skin to get it back along with live or die. You know, honestly, get it, uh, end of turn, live or die on brood spinner and then stacking this again to make like five one ones still seems quite good. So now we have this pack. Ooh, that's a late wildfire wicker folk, but... We've already made the choice to move into this, uh, this direction, and I will actually take the Moldering Gym here. I could use another big thing to do in the late game. It gives me another piece of mana fixing, and I don't think I need another 2-drop here because I have 6 2-mana creatures with a Winter's Intervention. So let's take Moldering Gym here as another late game play. Also, another thing I can sack to Final Vengeance once I unlock both doors. Ooh, say its name. Perfect. All right. Well, this is our deck. This is our deck. I did not expect the table to say its name, but happy enough with that. I'll take the long neck here as a three mana play. That's an enchantment. Helps me with some delirium stuff. Most valuable slayer that late, huh? 
No respect. I'm not respecting it either. I mean, we, like I said, we easily could have been red, but you know what? I think this deck ended up totally fine as well. Probably, this could be a 16 land deck. Honestly, I have so many ways to get mana. So yeah, I think this probably is a 16 land deck. I don't think I want to stretch my mana to like Splash Painter Studio or anything like that. So I think this is just the pile that we have. And it does look like we're heavy. No, nope. We're actually kind of even. Paranormal Analyst kind of goes in the uh, four mana slot here. You know what? We have so many creatures. We got to sort this out a different way. And I think two islands is probably correct with all the manifest that we have. And probably can just cut a swamp, honestly. So we basically get to play with um, 16 lands plus a land cycler and a twitching doll and a say its name that can help us get lands. And I just don't want to get flooded either. So I think this is a pretty nice configuration. This still gives us the nine green sources that we need just to be able to use our green mana to fix for the other colors. Two blue in case we uh, manifest one of the islands away. I think it's important to be able to have two islands. We have a good amount of manifest in our deck. And then five swamps with two terramorphics and the snatcher seems like a perfectly fine place to be. And I like to vanish from sight just because we're a little bit, little bit light on interaction. So this, this is just another good interactive spell. So, all right, let's try this out. Let's try this out. Soul Tie Delirium. All right, now before we head into the first match, just wanted to say that if you've been enjoying this content, then I really hope that you have, and you wanted to support the channel in another way, my Patreon is the best way to do so. Shout out to all of the patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. Access to the Patreon will give you access to the Discord channel, which I think is a wonderful way to level up your limited game. It's a, you know, if you want to figure out like what went wrong with your draft, we can we review draft logs. We go, we will go over what's the picks and we showcase our trophy decks as well. So make sure you check that out. Okay. We are on the play here and we are snap keeping this hand. Looks great. Turn to innocuous rat. We have under the skin threats around every corner to get us the blue source. I wonder if I'm supposed to like hold this. I would like to just find another random 3-mana thing to play. Okay, Manifest Dread from the opponent. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit greedy here and wait. The reason being is next turn, I can play Threats around every corner. And then on the following turn, I can go Paranormal Analyst under the skin and draw some cards. In fact... Why, well, they didn't even attack me. Alright. Okay, let's manifest. Oh, there's the island. That's funny. I think I want instant in my graveyard. I, I'm, I can go fetch the other island anyways. All right. Now, if they want to attack me, that's totally fine. But we have ways to get card advantage here, which I do love. I suppose theoretically I can miss with under the skin now. Because I, did, I, I took the island. Hmm. Well, I will never miss now. Hey, we got the wrong, the right one rather. Valgavot's Onslaught. You hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see it. Uh, what do I have in my graveyard already? I have an instant. But I might want to get back the gym. So let's, yeah, so let's, let's, whoa, whoa, whoa. How? Okay, there we go. Let's get a swamp, I guess. This card is just digging us super deep. They are they do have a million mana available. Well, if they kill my analyst in response, then I can just get the analyst back if I want. Uh 
Okay, well, now, now I can't even get back the analyst. Darn. Oh, well. That's fine. Good beats. We, we didn't get maximum value. Oh, wait, no! This still works. Kind of. Let's manifest this. Let's get back the Moldering Gym. And let's go <laughs> get more lands out of our deck, I guess. And then now let's play the Watchdog. And let's find Brute Spinners. I'll keep that. So they have four cards left. They know they probably know what this face down card is. And then we next turn we can flip it up and go wait room. Never mind. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, how big can that creature possibly be? Uh Let's go ahead and play the Rootwise Survivor. And just beat down. Nice. Oh! Well played. Uh, I don't want to draw any more lands, so I guess we just do that. Get a swamp, I guess. All right, we have two lands left in our entire deck. Two lands left in our... We have 16 spells left, okay? 16 spells left. I'm going to make a 5-5 five five first before I uh, surveil. What other blue cards do I have? Oh, it's the um, Vanish, Vanish or whatever. Oops. Oh, whatever. Um. Sure. Wait, we have one land left in our deck. Whew. I'm going to play this just so I don't get... Don't make a sound it or whatever. And then now we can... Just, we have no more lands left in our deck. But Oh, we do have a land left. Wait. Oh, I, I miscounted, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a card. I'll keep it. It's a, you know. Maybe I shouldn't have. I don't know. Just feels like a four power creature is not going to be bad on this board. Spine Seeker Centipede. Four, five, six. We have 11 mana available. Okay. Sultai Nonsense versus Sultai Nonsense. We got so lucky that they milled the Valgavots Onslaught. That was really big for us. Well, I'm obviously topping that. Okay. I don't know why they conceded, but I will take it. Still rank three, but I do like my deck. There's some decent synergies going on and threats around every corner is absolutely amazing in this deck. Okay. Come on, is this the deck that gives us that trophy? But I just, I also really liked our late game win condition. We have Say My Name, multiple ways to, add, to get back. Brood Spinners, certainly keeping this. Ramping with the Fungus seems really nice. So I'm going to just go ahead and go uh, Forest Fungus here. Actually, it's probably better just to play Brood Spinner. I don't need lands. Uh, yeah, I'll keep Final Vengeance, though. Final Vengeance plus Innocu Innocuous Rat is awesome. Ideally, I don't have to use it right now. Play this. Let's go get our forest and then play brood spinner. Oh, sorry. Let's go get our island. I forgot I had blue in my deck. Uh, and then let's get brood spinner. Um, I definitely don't want 
the long neck. I don't really want the survivor either. I just... If this was a forest... Ticket booth from the opponent. Whoa, under the skin is very interesting. <laughs> I can get back root wise survivor. Uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Because I can use final vengeance, but just because that allows me to just get in for a lot of damage. Right? My Brute Spinners can hit for four. Otherwise, I just do nothing. So I guess I, I do. Let's take a look at our graveyard. We have a land. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. That's our sorcery. What do we get? Cautious Survivor, okay. A real card. Four types in our yard now. Um, can cast Under the Skin to get back a land. Just because at this point, now that we got some damage in, like our win condition is to just make a bunch of tokens with the Brute Spinners. Obviously just naturally drawing lands would be ideal. Moldering Jim. Oh my gosh. That's so bad for them. They just take so much damage. It's actually really interesting. Wow. Uh, I really do want to get back a land here, though. So I will manifest the analyst. Get back a forest. And attack with everything. And honestly, I should probably just kill Weight Room. Because that just gives them a 5-5. Five five. So they blocked. And let's kill the Weight Room. And they take six, they go to seven. All right. So now if we just draw any land, we get to start sacking our Brood Spinners for value, which is great. Turn inside out to Waltz of Rage. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so silly. Oh well. Oh my gosh. That's super unfortunate. What kind of combination was that? I mean, Waltz of Rage, super high ceiling, right? Super high ceiling. Wow. Okay. I'm actually glad they use it on that, I guess. Good follow-up draw here. What? How many creatures did they get with that? Double Brute Spinner, a Final Vengeance, and an Analyst? Was that like a 70 for one? Well, that's an easy block. It's like, <laughs> or I just die. That's the other option, right? Let's go get a swamp, I guess. And we'll pass. They do have a tunnel of hate going, so I do have to be mindful of that. And I need to remember to put a counter on my Twitching Doll. But we this gives us just a little more mana to play with. One, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, well, I guess I got to take this. Because it is, huh. 
Right, I'm blocking the left creature, given the delay. They got me. They got me! Okay. Returning the survivor, getting in for damage seems quite good. Close, close game. Probably going to make two two twos next turn if this lives. If they go Tunnel of Hate on Beastie, obviously my land has to chump. But if they do that, then I can move... Yeah, if they do that, they're just in a ton of trouble. I'll take five. Okay. I hope that's it. Unreal. How do you do it? It's uh, quite the skill there. Oh, that's so, so bad. Yeah, I'm dead. I don't think there's a way out of this. The fact that there's a trampling death double striker with the Tunnel of Hate. Wow. What a tilting way to lose. This, this is... Obs obs like, if they're just getting me with the Beastie, I can just block and we can go back and forth and I can find some way to scrap through. But as is, I just can't do anything, right? So. Yeah, that's, that's insane. Oh, well. What can you do, right? If I, I guess if I save the final vengeance, I'd be okay. But yeah. The trample. The trample on the frantic strength got me. Double strike trampler. GG. With the pump. They, they like. Every, every combination they got to do. They got to do pump spell waltz of rage. And then they got to do frantic strength into tunnel of hate on a creature. Oh. All right. Those you just have to shake off. There's just not much you can do. Okay. We need to uh, shake that last one off. Just shake it off. Actually, this hand doesn't really do much early. I guess say its name. I'm hopefully, I'm just gonna run this out and hope to hit a. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Just naturally draw one of my two islands. That's how it's done, friends. That is how it's done. Uh oh. Let's hope they don't have a way to reanimate the vile mutilator. Sporogenic infection, I guess, is one way to kill my analyst. Wow. I just had to open my big fat mouth. Okay, well, I guess Moldering Gym is probably the best thing to do here. I can just go get a second Swamp, probably. Given that I have the Forest in my hand. Still getting plenty of value off of all of these cards. I don't think I'm going to be using Final Vengeance here, so... Doesn't really matter whether or not I play the forest. Let's manifest the rat. And go get a forest. They will have delirium soon. Balustrade worm. They got some goodies. I do have to be careful. I mean, next turn I'm probably just playing a five. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, you know, that's just sometimes you run into really good black green decks. That's just uh, the way the cookie crumbles, as they say. Wow. I think my best play is just making a 5-5 five five and getting a land. Let's manifest the... Ooh, that's actually really good. Let's go get a swamp. No attacks. 
I will probably have to kill the Swarm Weaver at some point. What a nice start. What is that? Beastie, Infection, Final... V <laughs> what the actual... Oh my gosh! What the actual hell was that? Can somebody please explain to me what happened? Oh, I got destroyed. Holy cow. They got Delirium, killed my 5-5, five five, returned Balustrade Worm, and... They have three cards in hand? Oh my gosh. All right. If they kill the long neck, I gain two life. And then I can block the beastie. They exiled they exiled my long neck? What the hell? I don't even have words! Oh my gosh! I am now rank 4! I had an amazing draw! I had removal, I had ramp, and my opponent hit me for like 13 in one turn with two of the best rares in their colors, and had multiple follow-ups as well. I still believe in my deck! I still think my deck is good! I'm 1 and 2! Okay. I will keep this. It's a turn two twitching doll. If I draw land, I can play threats around every corner. I have a removal spell. Okay. You know, you ever have those days where you just question everything? Where you're just like, did I draft well? Am I still a good magic player? Can I... Did I lose it? Like, wh what happened? Like, obviously they just played rares and I lost, but still. It's nuts. Right, drew a swamp. I don't know what they were thinking about. Well, let's hope they can't kill my Twitching Doll. They usually will. Blue, black. It's the controlling. Wow, they didn't. Okay. Fear of Infinity is a nice evasive creature, which I will look to exile at some point. But let's get the ramp going here with threats around every corner. Uh, I will certainly manifest Brood Spinner and put Island into play. Another great start. How am I going to lose this time? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I'm very creative. Okay, Tunnel Surveyor. Hey, this is all manageable. This is actually manageable. All right, looks like a final vengeance on Twitching Doll. Sure. We'll take some damage off of that. That's fine. They have two cards in hand. I can probably just play the machete. I just want to keep ramping. Wow. Okay. I mean, if they're going to give me a free 2-2, two -two, I'll take the free 2-2. Two -two. I am okay with such things. feel like we can probably pitch this land. All right, uh, no reason not to do anything other than just play Machete here. And whatever, okay, manifest that and get Swamp probably. Because I have Live or Die. I might want to go Live or Die plus Final Vengeance. That seems pretty good. No attacks here. Whoa, my sound is doing funny things. Okay. So I do have this Brood Spinner that can block the Fear of Infinity. We've been able to get a lot of value and them spending their turn to cast Derelict Addict is obviously very, very nice for us. Creeping Peeper, okay, a bunch of just random stuff, which I do not care about. Let's attack. 
question here is just kind of what I want to do now. Like live or die just doesn't do very much here. The fungus also doesn't do very much. I guess I'll just play cultist. I don't really want to final vengeance anything. I want to save my removal for something bigger. I mean, if they level up their Widow's Walk, I guess I'll just kill it. Because that, uh, um, that makes it so that Fear of Infinity can't attack me. Ritual Chamber. Okay, that's a big demon. I'm going to kill that enchantment. Because I think this is a grindy matchup and I think even the arena effect is going to be pretty good. Final, ooh, a second final vengeance, very nice. Let's sack the rat, get some value. Do I have an instant in my graveyard? I do not. Okay. At this point, uh, what, what are my blue cards? Analyst and something, oh, vanish from sight. All right, I'll just get a forest, I guess. It might act, Swamp might still actually be correct there. We're at 15, they're at 18. I guess they can get it back with Valgavoth's Faithful, but that's kind of whatever. I mean, it's, it's not bad, per se. Definitely not bad. But it does take their entire turn to do so for, like, not much more for their board. Fanatic of the Harrowing. Oh, wow, okay. Well, so long, Final Vengeance. Hey, they discarded a real card, too, at least. And I still have Live or Die if they kill my Brute Spinner. And they killed my Brute Spinner. Oh, this shuffles it back in? That's really annoying. Beat downs. Sure. And we are now gonna hit the gym here. Go to that weight room. Make a big 5-5 five five and manifest. Ooh, a root rice survivor. And go get a swamp. We have, I think, one basic left in our deck. We have a pretty good board. I think we can race this fear of infinity. Holy crap, how many of these unplayable four drops are you playing? Sorry, I'm just... Three Fanatic of the Harrowings? Come on. Come on. Let, let's... Let's be reasonable here. All right, we have a very large board. They are racing me. Okay, whew. Man, if I went one three with this, that would be rough. All right, regained our rank three spot. Also for what it's worth, I don't think that four drop is totally unplayable. I just think it's not very good and you should avoid playing too many copies of that card unless you have like some crazy reanimator deck. Okay, we are two and two. This is another solid hand. Hey, we're getting a lot of decent opening hands. We just, we've just lost to some absurd stuff. Now, if I draw a land, I think I want to sack the fungus so that I can play a turn three threats around every corner. That seems super strong. Looks like our opponent went to at least six. They are on the play though. Mountain and they didn't... Okay. I was like, there's some delay. They have a one drop in their hand. Okay, I'll hit them with the hello. Derelict like Addict certainly not at its best against a clockwork percussionist deck. We'll see. Yeah, red-white deck, but if we can just stabilize, it's still going to be fine. Like, I will happily block this percussionist if that's, if that's a thing. Innocuous Rat. Feel like the brute spinner's better. Two three. If it if it dies, it dies. 
Ooh, Winner's Intervention too? I will keep both. Now here's a turn where they can have the dragon fire. Honestly, if they kill my brood spinner and attack with hand that feeds, I think I'm just gonna fire off a main phase intervention on hand that feeds. And then just keep the, the fungus back. Wow, they just have nothing? Just a ticket booth? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass. I could sack this fungus now, get that four, uh, that swamp into play. Alternatively, I can just go um, end of turn winter's intervention something. And now because I have mana available, it's really hard for them to attack me with a combat trick because I have the combat trick to kill their thing. Scorching dragon fire after... Oh, that- th wait, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Why did I do that? Whatever. Okay, it's a Seize from Slumber, which they're not gonna cast. I will certainly not attack with the Fungus. I guess they can technically cast it, we'll see. But I will play the Threats around every corner. Uh, yeah, I will manifest Twitching Doll and get a Forest. If they play a land, they're probably just going to seize from Slumber my face down card. Because they have to cast it this turn. But they're out of gas. Are they really considering killing my Fungus? I guess if they think that their route to victory is with Tunnel of Hate, that makes some sense. But if that's the case, then I'll just trade with their face down card. And then just get them with the Survivor and all the other cards that I have in my hand. Like Twitching Doll takes a while to get set up. And I have a bunch of mana already. Okay, sure. That's also fine. Hmm. Seems like a good opportunity to smack and build my board. If they kill my land, sure. If they kill my survivor, sure. And I'm not blocking the 2-2 anyways here, so might as well get in. And look, even if they flip the Tunnel of Hate here, they're only hitting me for four. So I can easily just play the Rat in Final Vengeance next turn. Interesting. Yeah, I actually think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't know what this face down card could be. This is an Exile effect too, so it helps fight through Manifest Dread. Or turn inside out, rather. Do I have an instant in my yard? I do not. Oh, I do. Okay, whatever. Let's go with Swamp. Alright, now we can just... It was a Boiler Bill, just Ripper, sure. And yeah, I will... Gotta think. All right, let's just put it here. I don't know if there's like a three damage, four damage to every creature type card, but. All right, this should get it done. Okay. The comeback trail. The comeback trail. We all know how to win matches. It's to get paired against Boros decks. I'm just kidding. I, I actually, I know I take a lot of, talk a lot of crap about it. Boros is actually pretty solid. I just don't know how to draft or play with it as well as the other archetypes. All right, opponent on the play. Another totally fine hand. No interaction though. So if they play like a turn two signpost card, then it's going to be tough. Zealot is okay. We can... We can handle the Zealot. Curious what I want to draw next turn. I'm not even sure. But I'll surveil too. I I'm looking for removal right now. That's basically it. Uh, I don't really care about say its name here. Island does seem like a reasonable draw though. Whoa, they didn't have anything to play? Okay. Well, I'll play a 4-1. 
Attacks through the Zealot. They probably have make a 2 2. Oh, nowhere to run? Okay, sure. Wait, on that? They're really concerned about the four power creature, I guess. There's no way they have counter spell here, is there? It's just another removal spell, right? Okay, sure. That's fine. One for one me all day. Let's go get a forest. I'm telling you, threats around every corner is the truth. Card is very, very good. See, that's why I wanted the removal effect. Dashing Bloodsucker is annoying. I'm gonna keep this. I'm not gonna cycle it right now. It's just like the bit, the nice late game thing for me to do. I'm just gonna go Analyst plus Rat. And so it's like, if you wanna attack me, I'll block, get a land and draw a card. Right, so they absolutely need to kill the Analyst. And even if they do and attack me, I'll still block with the Rat, with the rat Ramp, and then play a Spectral Snatcher. Yeah, so they have a ton of removal. Okay. All right, now we get to play Snatcher. We're gonna eventually run them out of removal, right? Hopefully. Funeral room, three, four, five, six. With two, three, four, five, six mana. They have no creatures in their yard. All right, let's play the Watchdog. It's a land, I certainly don't want that. Let's play the Rat. Let's play the land. Pass. Maybe I should be attacking with the Rats, I don't know. Okay. Wow, that's really good. Uh, sacrifices a non-token enchantment. So I'm actually gonna flip this up, and I'll sack this, actually. I wanna keep threats around every corner. Let's manifest something good. No. Unlucky. Okay, there's the fungus. They're at 12. They might actually block with the Mutilator. I kind of want to get them to block with the Mutilator. Okay, sure. They have no creatures in yard, right? Oh no, they have a Snatcher. All right, I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill that stupid room. No free Snatcher for you. I mean, they're at six, right? So, one card. I have the Snatcher. We've, we have a lot more resources, but we just need to find some nice way to close things out. Removal spell and Viomutilator would be super nice, of course. They can't use a removal spell on this because it has Ward discard a card, fortunately. That seems just complete. That seems suicidal. I feel like they drew a removal spell. Oh, okay. Uh, I have to sacrifice two creatures. Okay. One, two. I will pay whatever life I need to pay. Uh, let's manifest dread. Actually, it doesn't matter because of threats around every corner, right? Yeah, let's do that first. Okay, let's manifest dread. God. Need to hit a nice creature, darn it. Well, this is good because I can uh, surveil after. Okay. Pay three life. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. I see. No, oh, that's really neat. Can I pay another three life? I don't know what happened, by the way. <laughs> what does it say? They can't pay any life. I don't really have a good attack other than with my Spectral Snatcher. Does it come to play tapped? No. 
So if I attack with the Snatcher, they block with the Bloodsucker. And then they can't attack me with the Mutilator. If I attack with everything, one creature gets through. Oh, actually, they can block with Mutilator. But then I have to pay three life. So they can block here and block here. They go to one. All right, I guess my only attack is with the Snatcher. Yep. That's fair. All right. Wow, Meat Hook Massacre. I mean, certainly might lose to that. Drawing a land there was awful. I feel like we, we're doing a really good job of filtering through our lands, but it doesn't matter. They're attacking me. Are you kidding me? Come on, bro. <laughs> That's absurd. What a top deck. Okay, whatever. All right, well, it's not a creature, so whatever. You get a land. That was an amazing draw. That's a block too. That was an amazing, amazing draw. I don't want Twitching Doll, but I will take Rootwise Survivor. Although, hold on. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, I might want this just to have an extra creature. I gotta think about this. If I sack this, I have to go to one. Mm. All right. I mean, if you top deck another thing, so be it, right? <sighs> I'm actually going to lose to this enchantment. Like, even if I make five tokens here... Even if I make five tokens here, they can block one. I have to go to one. And then they block one. I don't think they get it back. So then they take four, go to three. Okay. I mean, I guess I still, I don't really have a choice. If I attack with the Rootwise Survivor, they would have double blocked it and then gotten it back. Oh no, they couldn't have! Oh, did I mess up? Oh, I may have. I may have. No, I needed the I need the creature back. I need the creature back. This is, I guess, technically not lethal. Yeah, they could have blocked in a way where I, I don't die. No, 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 but the... Th well, let's see. If they double block... Yeah. If they... They double block here, then I kill the Brood Spinner. They single block here, and I have a 3-3. Three, three. I think I may have messed up. No, because... It, no, they single block here, then I get a... Th <sighs> what a disaster. I need a good top deck. Is that it? Oh, my gosh. I gotta think here. What does this do? I should have attacked last turn. That was so bad. Let's see how they block. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Um, God, that blunder is really bad. But this is lethal. I don't want I didn't want them to gain life. I didn't want them to gain life off of the two five eerie creatures, which is why I killed it. But I wanted to do it after blocks because I'm at one life. And Basically, if they left an insect back, I would have to kill it. Actually, no, I can sack this. <sighs> Meat Hook Massacre made me play so bad. This game I played really poorly. I should have attacked with the survivor, but fortunately we got it done with some key, key draws. I should have attacked with the survivor the previous turn. Okay, all right.
Anyways, that's behind us. This entire draft has just been one big emotional roller coaster. We are four and two. Let's go. Okay, on the play here. Getting that threats around every corner every game. I feel like this is the secret sauce. If you want your black commons to do work, you need the rat and the final vengeance. Alright, let's get land number four here though, just so I can play threats around every corner. Opponent with the turn two watchdog. Rat is very, very good against that. And we did in fact draw land number four. Certainly not going to use final vengeance on the watchdog here as this blocks very, very profitably. Enduring Vitality. That's scary, but like, I want to cast Final Vengeance next turn. So should, can I just wait one turn? Or will I regret it deeply? I don't think I will. All right. Let's do this. Let's get a blue source. Um... I can, I can, the thing is, I can cast a Final Vengeance and Live or Die next turn. So if they play like a big creature and I also feel the urge to exile the Enduring Vitality, I can definitely do that. They will have access to up to six mana this turn. So if they play like a Slavering Branch Snapper, obviously that's very good. Given that they just killed that, that's, that's not too bad. Now, obviously I don't get a land out of the deal, but yeah. And, and it looks like they're relying on this on mana. So I will go ahead and use the... Oh man, God. So many different ways to get value. This is nuts. I can Brute Wise Survivor here and Final Vengeance for maximum pressure. Or I can Paranormal Analyst Final Vengeance. I think that's actually just better. Let me think. Got to get in for every point, right? <laughs> so I get the other card back. I don't think I need more lands, so let's just keep taking permanence, I guess. And then we can actually just play it here too, which is nice. Wait, they like surveilled forest to the bottom, but they need mana? Were they relying on the um, Enduring Vital- Oh, never mind. They have plenty of mana. Uh, what are the types in their yard? Sorcery? So they just need Creature in the Graveyard to turn on the Centipede, it seems. Kind of want to hold off on the Rootwise Survivor, just because it doesn't seem to do that much here. In fact, I don't have a great attack here in general. Wait, did they get a forest? Are they mono green? I think they are. All right, I'm just going to pass. I feel like I like this most mostly as a surprise element. Okay. Why aren't they attacking me with these dogs? I mean, I'm I'm happy that they're not. They should though. Although I do have all this mana up, so maybe it's not a good idea to do so, but whatever. Like, I feel like the late game is very, very much in my favor, so I'm okay with this. Let's draw some cards. I'm actually just going to play this because this, <laughs> it's 3-4 blocks where we watchdog very well. Feels like the death touch doesn't actually do a whole lot for me here. This is an odd matchup. What the heck? Coordinated clobbering maybe? Who knows? Okay. Okay. Well, again, I don't want to really attack them. And they don't really want to attack me. It seems as if we are at a bit of an impasse. I need like a flyer or something. Okay, the beastie is a card. Uh, I don't need more than one blue source, so I'm just gonna go get Swamp. All right, well that is a Magic the Gathering card. 
I will play it. If they attack me with the beastie, I'll just block with the long neck. That'll pump up their inspector, though. Slavering branch snapper, okay. What is this? What is this? I mean, supposedly I get extra value. I mean, I have way more lands in play. Uh, the way that I win, though, is through my brood spinners. Another bashful beastie, okay. Okay, innocuous rat. Man, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna draw Tyvar. They're gonna draw Tyvar, and I'm gonna be sad. Or Balustrade Worm. That also makes me sad. Why can't it be ca Oh, could it just never be countered? Fair enough. They have so much beef. They just kept playing... Every turn, they played a 5-4. They went 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four, seven, six, five, five. I had Two of my spiders are in my, my 15 cards. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening on the left over there? Seven, twelve, seventeen damage. That's not lethal technically. They didn't attack me with the inspector. Um, how do I want? How else do I want to block? This goes like here. Do I want to block the other beastie? Or do I want to block the watchdog? No, this goes here. Honestly, maybe I should block like that. And then this goes here. No, 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 then I die. I need to put something on the bashful beastie. Oh, big block, big block. Okay, I guess Brand Snapper needs to get through. This goes here. This just goes here. All right. I'm sure there were better blocks. Actually, I should have put Wary Watchdog where the centipede is. <laughs> what the hell is this? What do they have? Horrid Vigor? Okay, so I'm not going to kill it in response. Because that would give them Delirium, I think. Yeah. Although, does that matter? Well, my Paranormal Analyst would, would live. I can, I can kill the Branch Snapper now. This is just so much though. No, you know what? I need the manifest here. I need the manifest here. From the uh, analyst. Okay. All right, that was quite the nonsense. Okay, let's manifest that. Let's get back Winter's Intervention. Okay. Uh, let's keep Vanish from Sight on top. Okay. Okay. What a turn. Let's kill that. That was an Altanek? Oh my gosh. Uh, they're at 19. Okay. I think this is a wash just because I can make a 3-3 blocker. Well, let's see what they do. They kept whatever... They kept something on top, so they certainly liked it. Oh, okay. All right, now how do we block? We're at 10 life. Block. I guess the other is a chump block. I guess if that's the case, I should just do it like this and kill the bigger creature and then just block here. I could have put it here, but they, they, they can return this. Okay. Man, what do they keep on top? Gosh, this is rough. I'm gonna keep this for the trample. 
I think. Oh, that was an absurd draw. Abs absolutely absurd draw. Question is, what do I get back? Okay, let's manifest. Ooh, jeez. I do oh my gosh, hold up. This is actually ridiculous. Okay, let's manifest that. What do I want to get back? It's not the analyst. I can't do the machete because I can't play that this turn. Grasping long neck is not bad. It gains me life. Yeah, it might be the long neck. Okay, and this gives us the ability to bounce the worm. It's really bad if they like, but can how can, can they like instantly kill something? There's no instant fight spell. Oh, break down the door. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so block here. Chump here. Then bounce this. Threats around every corner. Are you good enough? I don't think so. They have a 5-5. Five, five. It puts a creature into play. What are my types in my yard? Sorcery, artifact, creature, land. Okay. So Brood Spinner plus 6 mana. 1-2, one, 1-2-3, two, one, two, 4 five, six. Yeah, I actually don't want this. I'd rather draw like a Final Vengeance or something. I don't know. Did I, did I bin it? I thought I did. Okay, there it is. Okay, Moldering Gym. They're at 11. Let's attack. Because that gives me a free creature. This is a crazy game if we get there. Absolutely wild game. All right, so let's do this. So it's going to cost me eight mana total. So f two to flip and six to use. The problem is this is a 5-5 five, five trampler. I suppose I can play weight room and just trade. Let me think here because I might have lethal too. I gotta look at my card types in my graveyard. Land, instant, enchantment, sorcery, artifact, creature. So I can make six tokens. But some of the tokens need to block because they have a 5-5 five, five trampler. So one token blocks the beastie. And then a 3-3 three, three, and two tokens blocks the balustrade worm. Sure. Okay, they just have a beastie. They just have a beastie boy. So I can have a 5-5 five, five to block this and I will have a token black back to block. This certainly attacks. I'm just gonna attack actually by itself. They're gonna block, it's okay. Otherwise they just get a free block there, so. One, two, three, Four, five, six. I have six cards left. All right, wait room. We can hit another brute. Uh, uh, two, three. Okay, that's a fungus. I guess we'll manifest the fungus, and we'll pass. Okay. If they just attack me with everything, we're okay. Crazy combat here. I just need to get this trampler off the battlefield. That's what I need to do. And the thing is, I don't want to like put everything in front of the beastie. I don't even think they can really attack me with the beastie. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's block here. Let's block here. They could have plus two, plus two in trample, I guess. If they have horde vigor, we're dead anyways. All right. 
Okay. Seems like they have a follow-up. Sure. We did it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we did it. That's so insane. That is so insane. All right. Kill this. Attack for lethal. Oh my gosh. What a game. What a game. What a game. What a comeback. Starting out at one and two. And clawing back in this one. Brood Spinner for the win. Whew. Okay, two more. I told you, I like this deck. That last game was so crazy. I, I bet I could have even played that better. I'm sure I could have, but we tried our best and we came out victorious. So can't be too upset about that. I think that turn where they made the massive attack, it's possible we could have made better blocks so that maybe I could have used my removal spell in response and not worry about my paranormal analyst dying, but I don't know. Just gonna go fetch my island right away, save some time. No, having, having, not having any access to a creature here is pretty rough. So they're beating me down. Yeah, okay. Well, it's possible we lose this game just because they beat us down. Definitely. Okay, that's good, at least. All right, let's ramp. We have access to Final Vengeance plus more things. So I think we can survive the onslaught here. I mean, I'm just... What am I blocking? Because the Brute Spinner is actually an excellent blocker if I get to the mana to do it. But you know what? I'm just going to block. I think Norin is just a pain in the butt to deal with. So let's just do that. And if they spend her turn to flicker the Norin, so be it. If not, whatever. I have plenty more action here. Dashing Bloodsucker is definitely something that I'm interested in killing here. So why don't we go ahead and play Under the Skin. Get back Brood Spinner. Manifest Dread. Hmm. Okay. I think I still want Brood Spinner back. Let's go get Swamp. Let's play Brood Spinner. Holy cow. I don't even know what to I don't even know what to do. I guess I'll just I'll just keep the other brute spinner because it's likely to die. And then let's kill the bloodsucker. Okay. Tons of value. Tons and tons of value. I kept the brute spinner. I mean honestly it could have been the other one too. It's unlikely that they have double removal spell. The twitching doll would have also been a fine option. Oh, sure. Valgavoth? What the heck is that doing in your deck? In your red-black beatdown deck? I mean, they have to have Final Vengeance. You don't just- you don't just Vengeful Possession and not have Final Vengeance, so... What? Color me surprised. Wow. I mean, I'm just attacking. Actually, I should have been this. I should have just been this. It gives me an artifact. Like, it, at this point, it's just a little too slow to get going. So I'm going to play the Brood Spinner. And I'm going to bend that. My bad. Twitching Doll. You know, I'm at 9. I will, I will be a coward and keep Winter's Intervention up top. Okay? They, like, threatened. You know what I mean? So, why didn't they kill this? I don't understand what's happening. Okay. Uh, sure, that's dead. Why didn't they just do that instead of steal? Alright, anyways, we're getting a ton of value here. Can I die off of this? I have live or die, I guess.
I mean, I can't really die from this spot. So I think this is okay. Like, I take... Because I can just intervent intervention next turn, right? Yeah, we'll just... Here. Boom. Okay. Hey, look, I'm glad, I'm glad I did this, right? So now I can just do this. And... Hmm. I just, I guess I have to be careful about Vengeful Possession. I'll keep one back. If they have another Vengeful Possession, right? Like, I want to be able... They have to discard their card to do so. So then I can block with the Insect. It would be hilarious if they did have Vengeful Possession. Nope, just the Withering Torment. I mean, they still have to discard here, so. And so they go to 11, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so that's not... Uh, we're one short. <laughs> if I attacked, they would have died. Wait, they didn't discard? Okay. I don't know how I got paired against... Th I don't know how that pairing happened, but I will take it. I will take it. Okay, we are now 6-2, and two, playing for a trophy. From 1-2 to, to knocking on a trophy. Okay, on the play, and our hand is very, very solid here. Two forests, a swamp, a brood spinner, innocuous rat, long neck, and final vengeance. Just debating whether or not I want to run out the brood spinner. You know, I'm kind of, like, with my current configuration, I think, I think I'd rather get a few more draw steps in here before I decide what to do. Obviously, this is a better attacker, but... Also, maybe they just fire off a removal spell on the long neck. Although, if it's unable to scream, I can just fungus it and beat down still. Then we have fi Final Vengeance to go with the rat. Would obviously love the um, four mana enchantment that finds us a land. The old turn three tank. A classic. Okay, I will... Attack. And then I will, in, I will fetch for my island. Then I will play the Fungus and the Brood Spinner. And I will keep a land on top, I think. The Snatcher is interesting because I can't cast it the turn that I draw it. But if, if my rat dies, I can find, like, I can final Vengeance? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to keep it on top. I'm going to keep it on top. I feel like there's a reasonable chance I'm going to want a final vengeance with my rat and then manifest the 6-5. Right? They have to play a creature this turn. They have to. Yep. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Obviously, rule wise survivor would be nice, but let's just go ahead and kill this. Exile is beautiful. Now this is interesting because I can just kill the weight room because the 5-5 five five is actually quite annoying against my board. So I will do that. Just remove that as an option at least. And maybe they play something smaller and then that allows me to get in with the Rootwise Survivor. Actually, if they play a creature to block this, they just die. So they need to play multiple things here. If they just play one removal spell, then they're in trouble. Okay, so yeah, this is obviously very good. Yeah, Monstrous Emergence into a meat... Oh, okay. Sure. That's... Well, you know, at least the uh, Rootwise Survivor gets to get in here. Now they go down to two and they have to deal with three creatures. Okay, I'm liking this spot. This is three attackers. They're at two life. Now they can fear of isolation meat locker, which means they need to... They need one more play here. Uh oh All right, I need a removal spell, I guess. Valvagots? Oh my gosh. That sucks. Like, I was just like, you know, as long as they don't do anything crazy, we're looking all right. And then they had to just go and go do something crazy. 
Oh well. Literal. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, roller coaster of emotions. They're at two life. So now they can pick up Meat Locker and tap down my Brood Spinner. But they're at two life, so it's really hard for them to attack me. And I don't think they can afford to drown Diner either. Because if I just make four 1 1 flyers, they just lose. So I feel like if their last card that's not Fire Fear of Isolation is a removal spell, which I don't think it is. Wow, Entity Tracker, that was... <sighs> Goodness, okay. I get to draw two cards off of this. This is... This makes me... Does this go to the face? No. This makes me want to vomit a little bit. If they attack me and I draw a removal spell, it's all over. So I don't think they can attack me. Uh, what was this? A, a nothing burger. A 6-5 normally would be good, but an army of 5-5s five and a 5-6? Oh, man. All right. That's all we got. Look, if we die to a deck with a bunch of good rares... It's a, yeah, if, if we die to... Uh, <laughs> a block-constructed blue-green deck. It is what it is, right? So, we still have a shot as long as Brood Spit... Oh my... Dude, what? How do you get these cards? How? How? The format's been out for a month! Who are you drafting with? What if I manifested a, fl a flyer? Wouldn't they be dead? I don't know, man. Ho ho ho! We randomly sniped an Altenek. There we go. So I have to flip this up and tap it. I can start making some to tokens. Fortunately, I'm at 22. If they don't find an answer to the Brute Spinner, we still have a shot. We have five types in the yard. Five types in the yard. Wait room, okay. Don't kill my Brute Spinner, please. Oh, that's a doggy. That's a doggy. I will happily trade my creatures too, because the way that they win here is they need to start getting aggressive. Now that I'm at 22, so they need to start getting aggressive here. And I will just trade. I'll just trade all of these creatures. So those are two five fives. Do I have a land in my yard? I do. And I don't care about Twitching Doll, and I actually want the extra artifact in the graveyard. They have one green up, so let's go ahead and block. And double block. And then I want to just flip this up. Okay. And yeah, we got six types and a Brood Spinner. Let's go for it. Can they answer six 1-1 one, one flyers? They're at two life. How much life gain can you possibly have? They've drawn their, almost their entire deck. We are all in on six 1-1 one, one flyers here from the Boots Brute Spinner against an extremely powerful blue-green deck with Under the Skin, Unnerving Grasp, Valvagot's Onslaught, Entity Tracker, Bookworm, but they only have one flyer right now. They need to deal with two additional flyers, right? So these three card of these three cards, they need to deal with two additional flyers. Now, if they play like Tyvar Overrun, sure. I think they're thinking about what their outs can possibly be. Let's block there. Block there. Okay. That doesn't change anything. 
There's no Tishana's Tidebinder in the set, is there? Okay. Oh, that gave them a ton of mana. Okay. I think we got this. Oh my gosh, I think we got this. It doesn't give them all reach, right? Okay. Oh my gosh, what a game. What a game. What a run. What an obscene, obscene run. Wow. Brood Spinner for the freaking win. Wow. One and two to seven and two. Still rank three. Forever rank three. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good. Like I said, I had faith in this deck. I thought this deck was good. I thought this deck was really, really solid. Taking a look at the deck here, we had a nice black green shell. Great. Our great, great two drops. Innocuous Rat doing a lot of work here, especially with the double final vengeance. Right, we actually had enough fodder here because we had both the derelict addict, the double rats, and also every now and then the threats around every corner, along with moldering gym. So I think we had just enough. So this is a nice little interaction. Brood spinner acting as kind of a great early game play, but also a way to win in the late game. And then we had say its name and under the skin to get it back. Threats around every corner was absolutely amazing. I do not regret taking this over the sheltered by ghosts, I believe was the card. This was absurd in the stack. We had several ways to manifest. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, what is it? Six, seven ways to manifest. So a lot of ways to manifest, a lot of ways to get lands. And that's the one issue with the black green deck specifically is it has less ways to kind of put additional permanence into play, whereas the blue-green deck's a lot more capable of doing that because it has more card draw. Threats around every corner obviously helps with that. And then this is the type of deck where I do like Moldering Gym as well, just because it ramps you and then the delay game it still gives you that body, which you can take advantage of with cards like the Threats Around Every Corner. So honestly, this deck played out super, super smoothly. It didn't have any absurd bombs. Uh, Twitching Doll is fine. But it's obviously not on the level of some of the cards that we ended up playing against. But like I said, this deck, just good synergy, just enough interaction, good curve, Brood Spinner being an absolute all-star in this deck. And yeah, we had a lot of really, really tight matches and we were, we were able to pull it out and feeling really good about this just because we were kind of in a downward slump with some of the more recent videos. And now I'm glad to be back on the upswing with the trophy, getting one step closer to rank one. Wow, what a run this was. I was sad, I was happy, I was tilted. And then I was tilted and more tilted. Oh man, I need to, I need to go for a walk or something. Whew. All right, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've been enjoying this content and wanted to support the channel in another way, my Patreon is the best way to do so. That's patreon.com slash paulchion. Additionally, check out tcgplayer.com for all your Magic the Gathering and singles and sealed product needs. Make sure you click that affiliate link in the description below before making any purchases. Last but not least, check out heavyplay.com slash paulchion for 10% off your order on all things Things, premium Magic the Gathering supplies and accessories, things like deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, life pads, and more. Make sure you check them out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.